Howdy y'all, welcome back. Today I'd like to share with you this incredible structure. This is considered to be the first of its kind and honestly it absolutely shocked me to read the details of how this was built and what was occurring in America at the beginning of the 1800s. What if I were to tell you that the first modern suspension bridge of all time in all of history was created in the fledgling United States in 1808 by a man named Theodore Burr. And further, what if I was to explain to you that this first suspension bridge was, somehow, an old world style covered bridge suspended by meticulously curved and formed wood stretching across the Mohawk River in New York. Theodore Burr was born in Connecticut in 1771. At the age of 23, Burr had moved to Oxford, New York to pursue a career in architectural engineering. Theodore Burr then constructed the first Stringer Bridge in Oxford by the year 1800, a modest feat of engineering which he followed by constructing the largest bridge to have ever existed up until that point crossing the Hudson River at Waterford, New York in 1804. The Hudson River Bridge by Burr stood for over a century before being dismantled in 1909. However, the success and infamy gained following the completion of the Hudson River Bridge allowed Burr to begin to envision his next great invention, what would become one of the most unique bridges in United States history and the subject of today's video. The 997 foot long Burr covered suspension bridge across the Mohawk River in New York. Modern historians argue over if this was the first true suspension bridge in America, so let us try to quell that argument right now. All of the credit in history seems to go to another man, James Finley, a judge and inventor from Pennsylvania. Simple suspension bridges, like those seen in action and adventure movies sometimes called rope bridges, have their origins tied back hundreds of years with documented usage in both ancient Tibet and ancient Central and South America. That's believable enough as these simple rope bridges lack vertical suspenders and the other attributes that constitute a modern suspension bridge. The first bridge said to achieve all of those parameters, the true suspension bridge, is the 1801 Jacobs Creek Bridge by James Finley. Two stone pyramids were built at either end of the bridge roughly 14 feet tall, and the bridge was suspended from these two pyramids, stretching across Jacobs Creek. However, the Finley-Jacobs Creek suspension bridge was only 70 feet long or less, only had the one single span, and was severely damaged in 1825 and completely torn down in 1833. Nothing of this quote-unquote first suspension bridge in all of human history remains, so I find that to be a bit unsettling. Furthermore, Finley's Bridge did not become headline news or become well known worldwide until the Portfolio of Philadelphia, which was published in roughly 1810 after Finley had filed for and received the patent for the suspension bridge design in roughly late 1808. All the while in New York, unbeknownst to Finley or anyone else, Theodore Burr was simultaneously planning his own version of the first suspension bridge in history, which when completed, Burr's design would be over 14 times as long as Finley's. By 1808, before suspension bridges had become known to the world, before they were even patented, Theodore Burr completed the 997 foot long covered suspension bridge across the Mohawk River in New York. For the first time in New York's history, we see a suspension bridge rather than an arched bridge, the suspension cables being made entirely out of shaped wood. The original design had four spans of over 150 feet each, sitting atop three unique piers which could be accessed from the bridge. Eventually, four more piers were added, bringing the total to seven. Unlike earlier suspension bridges of little stature, the 1808 Mohawk covered suspension bridge was intricately designed to not only include walls and a ceiling, like the many modern covered bridges of Ohio and Pennsylvania, but the covered bridge also had windows, vendors on the inside and out, accessible piers which boasted an easier way to travel, and all of this vastly improved the community. Following the success of the Mohawk covered suspension bridge in 1808, Theodore Burr would go on to patent his suspension bridge design before constructing the first four bridges to cross the Susquehanna River in Pennsylvania. Of note, the Susquehanna River is one of the widest rivers in the world, and these bridges built as covered 
but not suspension bridges stretched roughly one mile across the Susquehanna River. Theodore Burr received little to no credit for his contributions to the suspension bridge, even though it appears his designs, including the Burr Arch Truss, became quintessential to engineering following his passing. Burr is treated with almost obscurity now, even though his original suspension bridge was nearly 15 times longer than the one by James Finley, with Finley's tiny bridge from 1801 receiving all the credit for sparking this ingenuity worldwide, when realistically, by 1801, Theodore Burr had already begun his design of the massive suspension bridge, implementing ingenious techniques that were not readily available in other parts of the old world. Theodore Burr was consistently pushing the limits of engineering, seemingly pulling ideas from the ether itself and manifesting them into reality as mile-long bridges. James Finley built a 70-foot-long iron rope bridge across a small creek. So who truly deserves the credit for inventing the modern suspension bridge? And furthermore, could all of this technology, these inventions, these ideas, this design, have actually been inherited from something much earlier? How did this technology first appear in the fledgling USA as opposed to the multitude of world powers who had large amounts of funds allocated to making engineering breakthroughs? Is the current narrative we read today to be trusted at all? I'd love to hear your thoughts and ideas down below. Please like, share, subscribe. You can reach out to me or donate to the channel with the link in my YouTube profile. And I can't wait to talk to you all on the next video.